Covering an area of 4.79 million square kilometers, the Coral Sea is home to the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest coral reef. Vast, magnificent, and wild. It's a unique and very special part of the world. Located off the east coast of Australia, the reef supports the greatest concentration of life found anywhere on the planet. Here, wildlife flourishes in the spectacular raw setting of the Coral Sea, home to the world's richest marine ecosystem. Fragile, complex, and sometimes confronting. Come with us on an epic journey as we explore the miracle of life here on the Great Barrier Reef, a living treasure. The vast Coral Sea extends 2,000 kilometers down the northeast coast of Queensland, Australia. The sea takes its name from the remarkable coral formation that lies beneath, the Great Barrier Reef, the largest living organism on Earth. The Coral Sea is characterized by its pristine tropical waters and calm seas with frequent rain and tropical cyclones during the wet season. While the shallow inshore waters average around 35 meters, the outer reefs can plunge to depths of more than 2,000 meters. Right across the Coral Sea, wildlife of all persuasion live and thrive in this rich marine environment. The tiger shark is one of the Great Barrier Reef's apex predators. Sleek, powerful, and intimidating, she can grow over five meters long, making her one of the world's largest sharks. Tigers have a wide habitat and can be found in shallow and deep water across the Coral Sea. Her name derives from the dark stripes down her body, which resemble a tiger's pattern. Primarily nomadic, she follows warmer currents and tends to stay in deeper water along the edge of the reef. But she'll also move into shallow water when pursuing prey. She's not too fussy and has a reputation for eating almost anything including birds, fish, sea snakes, and other sharks. She's also known to attack dugongs. But if there's one meal she prefers most, it's the sea turtle. And she'll travel vast distances just to dine on her favorite dish. While live turtles are still on the menu, tigers on the Great Barrier Reef tend to prefer dead or weakened turtles floating on the surface. This turtle died of heat exhaustion and has been swept out to sea with the outgoing tide. Lured by the oily slick of the rotting carcass, the sharks will travel far and wide in pursuit of their prized meal. And when they reach their target, it quickly turns into a feeding frenzy. The 
Tragically, this pregnant female died before she had a chance to lay her eggs. The raw power of the shark is phenomenal. Shredding the shell and flesh with razor-sharp teeth, the ferocious tiger makes light work of the carcass. Savage and brutal, the ruthless tigers are one of the coral sea's most feared predators. This huge, gentle giant is the potato cod. Growing up to 100 kilograms, he's one of the biggest fish found in the Coral Sea. A homebody, he never ventures too far from home and is content to stay in the same reef location his entire life. He's a fish that commands respect, with the local sharks happy to share their domain and keep their distance. He's got a huge mouth and an appetite to match. In fact, his mouth is so big, he'll often eat his prey in one gulp. And his best friend is this tiny fish, the blue streak cleaner wrasse. This odd couple have an unusual relationship built on mutual respect. The potato cod accumulates dead skin and parasites that need to be cleaned, and he relies on the wrasse to do the cleaning for him. With full access, the wrasse is free to swim into the cod's mouth to do his work. No matter the temptation, the potato cod refuses to eat his friend and loyal servant. It's the ideal working relationship. The potato cod gets rid of annoying parasites and the cleaner wrasse gets an easy meal. It's what's known as a symbiotic relationship. But as with all relationships, things don't always go to plan. The sneaky wrasse is known to take advantage of the trusting cod, sometimes feeding on the healthy tissue, which can be harmful to the cod. Despite the wrasse's occasional indiscretions, Somehow, this unusual relationship works. And like the complexity of the reef itself, life in the Coral Sea can be both weird and wonderful.
One of the Great Barrier Reef's great success stories is the majestic humpback whale. Back from the brink of extinction, since whaling stopped, the humpback population along the east coast of Australia has gone from as little as 100 whales to over 10,000 today. Each year, between June and September, the Coral Sea comes alive as thousands of humpbacks migrate north along the east coast of Australia to the warm, pristine waters of the reef. Travelling up to 10,000 kilometres from Antarctica, the whales head to the reef to mate and give birth. While on the reef, they spend most of their time relaxing and playing, having stocked up after a summer of feeding on krill and plankton in Arctic waters. Adult humpbacks grow up to 16 meters in size and weigh over 40 tons. This female will eat up to 2,000 kilograms in a single day. During mating season, the male humpbacks produce songs which are believed to attract females. The songs comprise a magical mix of clicks, moans and eerie wails with distinct patterns that can last for over 20 minutes between breaths. Known for their spectacular breaching displays, the whales love to play and frolic in the pristine reef waters. Despite their huge size, they can propel themselves well clear of the water. No one really knows why they do this. Some experts think it might be to discard parasites, while others theorize it's just about having fun. Either way, it makes for a compelling spectacle. They also love to slap the water with their tails or flippers, which may be a way to communicate to each other. It could also be a way of showing dominance during the mating season. Big in size and personality, the playful humpbacks of the Coral Sea are a very welcome sight on the Great Barrier Reef. Stretching over 2,000 kilometers, the Coral Sea sustains one of the world's largest tropical fish populations. From the very smallest to the largest, the reef supports a diverse range of fish with over 1,500 different species calling the Coral Sea home. With so many different shapes, colors, and sizes, it's a magical place. The 
the sheer volume and variety of fish is unlike anywhere else in the world, with the Coral Sea literally teeming with marine life. It's not unusual for hundreds of different species to be found on a single reef. Sometimes solitary, and sometimes in huge schools. Fish are also an essential part of the coral sea food chain. Many fish species also depend on the reef coral for food and habitat. It's what makes this part of the world so very special. And the richest and most complex marine ecosystem on Earth. The Coral Sea is full of amazing creatures, each with their own distinct behavior and physical traits. This fish may look like any other nondescript fish, except for one defining trait, his astounding jaw. He's the sling jaw wrasse, and when he attacks his prey, it's a sight that defies belief. He possesses the most extreme jaw protrusion found in the Coral Sea. Tempted by a small shrimp, this female wrasse prepares to strike. Two large ligaments allow her to achieve phenomenal jaw extension. Fully extended, the mouth forms a tube and she engulfs the crustacean in rapid time. With exceptional speed and the longest jaw protrusion in the animal kingdom, the extraordinary sling jaw wrasse is perfectly adapted to a life hunting in the Coral Sea. While this creature may not have the movie star looks, he's as important to the health of the environment as any other creature living on the Great Barrier Reef. Like a big underwater caterpillar, the sea cucumber crawls along the seafloor, feeding on plankton and decaying organic matter. While sea cucumbers are found all over the world, they're particularly abundant in the Coral Sea. They sift the ocean floor using up to 30 tentacle-like tube feet located around his mouth, pumping water through his mouth and rear end. They digest organic material, excreting everything else. Remarkably, what comes out the other end is cleaner than what goes in. While the excrement may look like waste, it's actually good for the environment. Like a vacuum cleaner, they filter and purify the sand. Clean sand is essential for the health of reef mangroves Seagrass beds are also in a much better state when sea cucumber numbers are high. He may not get all the attention, but he's a star in his own right. Playing an essential role 
in the health of the Great Barrier Reef's delicate ecosystem. Like a periscope retreating, the spearing mantis shrimp burrows his way into the ocean floor. Here, he lies in wait, ready to surprise his prey. Like his relative, the peacock mantis shrimp, he's a deft hunter. With spring-loaded arms and long, sharp claws, he spears his prey. With the trap set and hidden from view, it's now a matter of wait and see. Like all ambush predators, he knows patience is the name of the game. With brilliant eyesight, he has a 360 degree view of his killing field. Eventually, his patience pays off when an unsuspecting fish swims into view. But his aim is wayward, with the fish managing to escape. But he's not going to miss a second time. This time, it's a precision strike, spearing the fish like a harpoon. He then takes his catch into the burrow to be eaten. This fish is easy game, with the shrimp striking a mortal blow. Deceptive and lethal. The ingenious mantis shrimp is the Great Barrier Reef's most prolific swordsman. Of all the sharks in the marine world, there's no shark more unique and odd looking than the scalloped hammerhead. Due to overfishing, hammerheads are only found in small numbers in the Coral Sea. His distinctive T-shaped head gives the appearance of a hammer. This young male looks for his next meal. He'll eat most fish, including other sharks, squid, an octopus, with stingray, one of his favorite dishes. There's no shortage of food here in the Coral Sea. Young hammerheads are found close to shore, whereas adults prefer the deeper water along the outer edge of the reef. Sometimes they swim in large schools, and sometimes on their own. Spotting a stingray, he gives chase. Eyes mounted on the sides of his head give him a 360 degree view of his prey. The T-shaped head also allows him to dig for rays buried in the sand. Fortunately for the stingray, he proves to be too big for the ambitious hammerhead and lives to tell another tale.
Nightfall on the Coral Sea summons a very strange and mysterious creature. Peering out of the darkness, this bioluminescent fish is one of the reef's most intriguing characters. He's the flashlight fish with a remarkable ability to glow in the dark. Two torch-like organs located under each eye contain bioluminescent bacteria which the fish can turn off and on at the blink of an eye. Using his glow light, he can detect and attract prey. He lives in caves and crevices along the edge of the reef and only comes out at night to feed on plankton and small fish. By turning the light off, he can also hide from predators, allowing him to disappear into the darkness. It's also believed they use the lights to communicate with one another. A miracle of nature, the flashlight fish is one of the most unique creatures living on the Great Barrier Reef. If there's one creature in the Coral Sea that can be considered the master of disguise, then it has to be the octopus. With an incredible ability to mimic his environment, he's the ultimate showman with a big bag of tricks. He loves coral reefs where there's no shortage of places to hide. He can also change his shape to squeeze into the smallest gaps. With sophisticated skin cells, he can change color and shape to blend in with the background. He uses this amazing camouflage technique to hunt and also as a defense mechanism to avoid detection. One minute he's a piece of coral hanging from a ledge. The next he appears like magic out of nowhere. Highly intelligent animals, he's the ultimate magician and perfectly adapted to a life of disguise on the Great Barrier Reef. The most common shark found in the Coral Sea is the reef shark, which includes the black tip, white tip, and gray reef sharks.
They're found in shallow water near steep drop-offs on the outer edge of the reef. Unlike some of their bigger relatives, reef sharks are generally smaller in size with most individuals less than two meters long. Reef sharks are also highly social in nature. During the day, they'll swim in groups of up to 20 individuals with different species happy to coexist. Reef sharks have an extremely small home range of just a few kilometers and are content to stay in the same section of reef sometimes for years at a time. Integral to the well-being and balance of the ecosystem, a large population of reef sharks is generally a good reflection of a healthy reef. With an alien-like head and sharp teeth, the moray eel is an imposing figure. This eel lives on the outer reef of the Coral Sea, where he shelters during the day in a rock crevice. He's at home skulking his way through the maze of coral, where he spends most of his time safe from predators. There are over 200 known species of moray eel. He's the giant moray, the largest of them all, growing up to three meters long. The constant gaping of the mouth may look sinister, but he's simply drawing water through his gills. Highly territorial, he'll enforce his patch of turf for up to a kilometer. Targeting mainly small fish, he'll occasionally eat small octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. Two sets of powerful jaws allow him to devour fish whole. Morays don't see too well, and they rely on their heightened sense of smell to detect prey. With sharp teeth and a bad temper, he's got an attitude to match his menacing looks. Like an alien spaceship drifting through space, this broad club cuttlefish swims with a gentle wave-like movement from her side fins. With the use of sophisticated skin cells, she has a remarkable ability to change her color to blend in with her reef environment. She uses this extraordinary gift to hide from predators. When hunting small crustaceans or fish, she produces a rhythmic pulsation of darkened bars that travel the length of her body, which are thought to mesmerize her prey. Her eyes are amongst the most developed in the animal kingdom, allowing her to see what's in front and what's behind. With her prey in sight, 
she extends her two long tentacles and prepares to strike. This cuttlefish targets a helpless crab with ruthless efficiency. Powerful suckers located on the tips of the tentacles allow her to secure the crab and he's quickly immersed. The long, fast-moving tentacle is a powerful weapon, with this small fish next on the menu. Mysterious and highly intelligent, the cuttlefish has the largest brain to body mass ratio of any invertebrate living in the coral sea. One of the most recognized fish living in the coral sea is the clownfish. Easily identified by their bright coloring, they're highly social and live in groups of three or four, led by one dominant female. Common across the reef, they live in anemones in shallow water. The anemone anchors itself to the seafloor and uses its tentacles to attract food. Like many creatures living on the reef, the two species share a symbiotic relationship. The anemone's tentacles have stinging cells that release a toxin when brushed. The clownfish has an immunity to the venom and is a welcome guest. Nestled among the tentacles, free from predators, and swaying in the current, it's the perfect home. It's a productive relationship that works both ways. While the anemone provides protection for the clownfish, the clownfish returns the favor, protecting the anemone from butterfly fish that graze on the tentacles. Before spawning, the male prepares a nest by clearing a spot on bare rock. With the anemone providing protection for the clownfish eggs. She can lay hundreds of eggs at a time. After the eggs are laid, the male will fertilize them. The male does most of the egg sitting, and like any doting parent, he takes good care of them, fanning them, and occasionally eating eggs that are damaged. Ten to twelve days later, the eggs begin to hatch after sunset. They start their delicate life transparent, but as they mature, they start to gain color. As juveniles, the young will settle to the bottom of the reef and search for another host and enemy. And so this remarkable reciprocal relationship will begin all over again. While in the protected warm waters of the Coral Sea, 
many of the humpback mothers give birth. A female humpback has a baby every two to three years, and she carries her young for a gestation period of about 12 months. With more whales turning up to the Great Barrier Reef every year, newborn calves are at a record high. Each winter, the reef teems with newborn whale activity. The playful newborns are between three and five meters long, weighing up to 900 kilograms. Feeding on mum's milk, a calf will stay on the reef for up to four months to fatten up. With mother's milk up to 50% fat, the hungry calves will drink up to 600 liters a day. The Great Barrier Reef is the perfect nursery, allowing the calf to build up body fat for insulation so it can survive the 3,000 mile return journey back to the icy seas of Antarctica. He'll stay with mum for up to a year before becoming independent. During this time, he'll double his length and will keep growing until he's 10 years old. The bond between mother and calf is incredibly strong. Vulnerable and innocent, he just wants to play and explore. Protective and nurturing, she's a doting mum, with the calf never far from her side. It's during this first year where he's most vulnerable to attack by killer whales or sharks, and mum's always on guard. Captivating and enchanting, their interaction is magical and loving. Mother and calf will stay, play and feed here in the Coral Sea until early spring before heading south to the cooler Southern Ocean. Beautiful and graceful, these gentle giants are one of the Coral Sea's most welcome visitors. With a growing number of whales making the annual pilgrimage north and an ever-expanding nursery, the future for these majestic creatures here on the Coral Sea has never looked brighter. Wild, magical, and so precious. This is the Great Barrier Reef, a living treasure.